So yesterday I had a trade that netted me $6,500 in less than 30 minutes. And in today's video, I'm going to be walking you through the exact ICT trade setup that I look for on seek and destroy conditions and how you can take and copy this approach into your trading to get the same results. And then maybe also send your mom a thousand dollars for lunch afterwards. How's it going everybody? Zach back with another trade recap. All right, in today's short, I took a short on NASDAQ and I'm gonna take you in real quick and show you the news because we have a lot of landmines, right? A lot of landmines, high impact news events later on this week, okay? But we didn't have anything today actually or on Monday, right? And so that's kind of why you're seeing this chop sideways, right? On Monday and right here on Tuesday. But I took the short down here. I'm gonna show you how I got my bias and everything. But on this short, I made $6,500, okay? And this trade, I was in it for about, let's say, I got in at 9.55, got out fully around 10.30, right? So I was in there for a little less than an hour, all right? But like I said, there's no news, right? So I'm not really expecting too much to happen, right? Just kind of was anticipating Seek and Destroy Monday for sure and Tuesday. And Monday, you really saw it bad. But today, it actually provided a nice setup. And you'll hear me talk about how you can trade seeking to destroy conditions, right? But you wanna trade the extremities of it. You wanna trade the extremes, not in the get chopped in the middle. You wanna try and trade the extremes. And so if you're nimble and you know what you're doing, you can pull it off, right? Like I did today. You can actually, it's actually pretty predictable once you know what to look for, but you have to see it over and over and over again to kind of get a feel for how it, how it works and how it moves, all right? So let me take you in and show you my trade today. Okay, so we're on the daily highs and lows chart. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hide my camera real quick so it's not so distracting. As you can see, right, I trade from 8.30 to you know maybe 11.30 in the morning, but I wasn't at my desk until we were already up here taking out this high right here. Okay, previous day's high on Monday. And you can see Monday was really choppy, right? Not a lot of stuff. I, I took a little one minute, got stopped out break even inside here towards the end of the day. But today, right, I caught this move down. And so if you actually look, right, we took out previous day's high and I also saw this high up here. Okay, and we actually didn't take that out. We actually left it there. But when you go, right, and look at the sessions, right, same thing. London sweeping Asia's high and low is a warning sign that we can get the same thing happening in New York, right? And that's going to cause that seek and destroy our back and forth conditions, right? Where it's just a, a meat grinder sideways. No, no real expansions like this day, right? Or this day. You have that warning sign, right? And then boom, chopping around. And when you combine that with no news on Monday and Tuesday, and we have all these high impacts later, like FOMC, CPI, all those things, that paints the picture or gives you an idea, okay, what to expect early on in the week. So this is just another warning sign, right? And when you combine it with the news events and the calendar, it paints a nice picture and gives you a, a probability to say, hey, we might actually just experience that range expansion or that seek and destroy condition right here. And so that's, that's something you don't wanna get caught in. But when you have, right, a nice range and a clear setup like you did today, I'm gonna show you how you can predict that, right? So let's go in, we looked at the sessions, but let's, let me show you what I saw on the indices, right? So remember I said we came up here and we took out this high right here, right? And we left this one on NQ. Well, if you look over here, this is the one hour chart for ES and NQ. If you look, we actually did take out this high, right, on ES. You see we purged it here. And we didn't take it out on NQ. Okay, so that is what we call SMT, all right, or smart money technique, smart money tool. There's, there's two different names for it. You can see, right, it's, it, it's barely there, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave it like the red line, because that way it's easier to see. You can see we took it out on ES and we left equal highs on NQ. And so we already had a buy side liquidity purge, right? So we don't necessarily need to go any higher. Right, we took out this high, matched up with ES, but we didn't take out this high on Friday. Right, we didn't take out this high on Friday, or from Friday, Friday's price action right here. 
And so that's what I saw, right? Coming up into here, and I was anticipating the seek and destroy conditions. I was anticipating the market profile, right, to play out, right? The sweeping of the sides. And you can see, right, take out one side of the range, come back and seek the other, right? So it's just punishing everybody trying to catch a breakout, trying to catch a breakout down here, take some higher. Trying to take a, catch a breakout up here, take some out, it goes lower, right? So that is what Seek and Destroy is all about. It's all about purging one side of the range, right? This range expansion that you're seeing here. It's all about purging one side of the range and expanding the opposite, right? And so that's why you get that broadening formation. And so that's what gave me the narrative of, of looking short here. Because I saw the SMT with these highs, right? I saw the SMT with this high right here. We didn't take it out in NQ. And I also saw we already took out buy side, right? And so when you have SMT present, that's a crack in correlation between correlated assets because these assets should move together, right? They're correlated positively, positively correlated. And when you have something like this occur where we don't take out a high and we do take it out on one of the others, well, this is showing me that NQ is relatively weaker, right? Because it failed to take out this high. And also when you have that crack in correlation, that means smart money is actively trading in the markets, okay? When you have SMT, it means smart money is actively trading. Let's go ahead and let's show you my executions for this trade, okay? So we had this buy side liquidity purge. I'm just gonna go ahead and mark it up like I did. Buy side liquidity taken out. And we also had SMT with this high. What I like to do is I just put SMT and I'll come in here and I'll say SMT ES, right? So I know it's with ES, and that's kind of just what something I do. So I know it's there, right? And I'm monitoring that, and I saw the buy side liquidity purge, and I saw price kind of stutter before, then push through it, okay? And then we started kind of chopping around, and then right at right after open, right? Right after open, let's go ahead and mark our midnight opening prices though, real quick. Don't forget to do that, right? This also gave me some nice confluence as well. We got midnight open. And let's go ahead and let's draw out 8.30 open right here. There we go. Okay, we got 8.30 open and midnight open, right? And so when you're bearish for the day, or in the morning at least, right? And you're bearish and you have 8.30 above minute opening price, well, that means you're in a deep premium for the morning, right? And so you can see we have our daily candle indicator here, right? And it opened high of the day so far and the low of the day. And you can see now from this high to this low of the day, where are we in this range? Back at 50%, right? And so that's what Seek and Destroy is all about. Hitting the extremes and returning back in the middle of the range and just chopping about. So we have that, right? And when you have 830 up here above minute open and you're bullish, sorry, bearish for the day, <clears throat> why, why is it considered a premium? Well, think about it. If you're anticipating bearish conditions for the day, you want to be buying above minute opening price so you can catch the daily candles expansion down, right? And catch a piece of that move. When you're buying up here in this high time frame wick or this high time frame candles wick, and you have 8.30 open up, up here when you're looking to trade, well, that means that, hey, we're at least going to get a move back towards minute open, and then you can target some liquidity, right, down below as well. And so that's why when 8.30 is above minute open price, that's why price is considered in a deep premium because you're up here in this daily candles wick, right? It's the opposite for bearish, sorry, for bullishness. If we were down here somewhere, right, at 8.30 open and we were trying to buy below minute open price and catch the expansion higher, well, then you'd be buying in this bullish wick down here on the daily candle. So that's, that's why, in, in simple terms, why 8.30 is kind of like a barometer, right, when you combine it with minute open price. And that's why I always have it on my chart to kind of get my bearings for the day and see what's realistic, right? What, what can be expected? And so when you combine that, right, with 8.30 above minute open price, combine it with taking out buy side liquidity and having that SMT on ES, and also the seek and destroy conditions, right? It paints a nice high probability setup to go lower. And so when I saw this five minute fair value gap form right here, right? When I saw this form here, that was an immediate light bulb for me saying, okay, we just took out this low, right? Or maybe you can even say this low, right? But this low came up and purged the buy side. So when we came down here, right? And I kind of I kind of view this as the market structure shift right here. Could even use this one as well, right? Either one. I saw that, right? And we closed below 830 open. And we had this bullish candle come up. And then I, I was waiting for 
some type of displacement, right? Some kind of fair value gap or something to form. I didn't want to just automatically short, right? And I saw that we had closed below these five minute fair value gaps and came back up and closed above. So I, I really just wanted to be patient and wait for 930. And so 930 is what gave you that up and down movement, right? But even with 930, right here on this down close candle, we came up and we didn't take out this high. And we actually formed this fair value gap. And I noticed that ES already took this high. And so I was like, okay, I like this. There's SMT. We have seek and destroy profile that looks like it's going to play out because no news today. We have 830 open above midnight open price. And we have clear liquidity targets down here, right? All these lows kind of relative equally, relative equal lows. Boom. So I'll liquidity right there. And I can just, we'll just name that REL's relative equal lows. And we also had this low right here, right? Below the day so far. It was made so I saw liquidity below here as well and so what I did was when I saw this form and I'll just make this the little light bulb where's here we go light bulb here light bulb goes off in my head saying okay I like how we've taken this low out we're kind of disrespecting these imbalances here I want to see what happens and look for some kind of displacement and when we got it right here on this five minute fair value gap all I did boom when this formed, the very next candle, I had my limit order ready, got in three right there. So right here, I had it all placed up, ready to go. I was going to target the relative equal lows. About a 2.56 R trade. And if I had held all three for this low right here, it would have been like $7,200, I think. $7,200 if I held it all the way for the relative equal lows. But I said, you know what? Let me pull up my fibs real quick, right? And my stop was above this high. Let me pull up my fibs. So let me let me just see something real quick, right? Let me let me see the projections. And when I saw a negative two line up with this low, and I said, you know what? I'm not gonna take the risk and get greedy and hold all three for here. I'm gonna take two off right here at this low, right? The low hanging fruit, so to speak. So I did that, two off here, one off, left a runner down here for the relative equal lows. And you can see we've got that expansion even lower down to almost the negative four, right? And when you get close to that negative four, you gotta keep in mind, right? Seek and destroy conditions. We are in chop right now on this higher time frame, this one hour here. It's not gonna be the most accurate, right? It's not gonna be the most accurate. So when I pulled this fib, I said, you know what? I'm gonna take everything off in the reversal zone here. Cause you never know, it could just purge this low and then go back to the range or it could go down to the negative four. Who knows, right? But I'm gonna get my piece of the pie, call it a day. And I'm not gonna get greedy, right? I made 6,500. I'm gonna take what's given to me and that be that, right? And when we get close to here, what can be expected reasonably when you hit the negative four or get pretty close to it, right? You can expect a retracement back to 50% of the range, right? Just like I opened up with before. And that's what we're chopping around now, right? So if you miss the short, you could reasonably expect, right? To maybe get, maybe get some kind of long setup back to equilibrium, right? Of the range. So that could be another, um, trade setup after taking the short, maybe look long, right? But I was one and done. I made a nice profit today and I was gonna call it a day, right? I'm gonna go enjoy the rest of my day, sent some money to my mom for lunch, and that was that, right? So I hope you guys learned a little bit about this trade setup and you know why I was looking short, right? And I'll be honest, when you see a clean seek and destroy day like this, it doesn't mean you can't trade it, right? You just have to know what to look for, right? You have Asia being swept, and then we sweep London, right? Sweep London, and then we still have London's lows intact that haven't been swept yet. So that's what happened in New York, right? That's why you saw that drop. And so now we're back at 50% of the range, and I'm thinking price might just want to chop around the rest of the day, but who knows, right? We could, we could get another sell-off lower. Whatever it is, we're in this. It's kind of getting messy now. Let's get rid of some of this stuff here. We're in this higher time frame, right? We're back at minute open. We've hit that, look at the precision there. And we're inside this one hour for value gap, right? And we've hit almost the 50% of that as well. So who knows? We could continue lower, take out this low maybe, or maybe come down somewhere into a discount here, right? Maybe take out this low, whatever it is, right? I'm not too interested in the rest of the day. I'm gonna wait for tomorrow, right? We have CPI tomorrow and the FOMC meeting minutes that are being released tomorrow as well. So I'm more interested now, I wanna focus on the red folder news, see what's gonna occur, and then hopefully we can get some kind of move out of this 
entire time frame consolidation, right? And maybe take out the equal highs that have been generated now or come down here and sweep these equal lows right here. Either one, we're gonna see how we open up tomorrow and that be that, right? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got to kind of see Seek and Destroy in action because we've seen it the past two days and also see how you could take advantage of it, right? When you're in a really small range, I don't find it's worth it to trade one minute little scalps, right? But when you have a clear setup on like a five minute and you have clear targets, right? And a nice narrative that's being built saying, okay, we have Seek and Destroy, we've taken out London High, I haven't taken out London Low. That's when you can get some nice setups in an environment like this. So if you like this video and you wanna learn more from me, what I want you to do is go down and click the link in the description below and check out ICT Accelerator. ICT Accelerator is a community-based education platform that I started and it's what countless other traders are using to transform their trading, right? I explain my approach and how I interpret ICT concepts from start to finish, right? It's clearly laid out, clearly explained and concise, no bullshit and it's straight to the point. So if you're looking to improve your trading, right? Maybe you're trying to find profitability or maybe you're looking to refine your edge, then what I want you to do is go down, click the link below and check out ICT Accelerator. And if you like the video, hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.